Hi, um, good afternoon everyone. So first of all, thank you for GeekCam for the opportunity. So um, I'm so glad to, to, to deliver my session here. So first of all, my name is Harley Davidson. If you guys wondering, it's like the motorbike, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I will talk about the application security for free. Um, I'm working for Associate Application Security Consultant for a company named Vantage Point Security. It's application security uh, firm, consultant firm based in Singapore, but I'm in charge in Jakarta office. So formally, I'm working as quality assurance, and I'm Easy Console certified, ethical hacker certified. Um, you can reach me out at Harley the Davison at vantagepoint.co.id and I'm happy to help organization to put security aspect in every stage of software development lifecycle. Okay, that's for the introduction. So this is the goals about topic that I want to deliver. So the goal is finding security issue on development stage using open source static application security testing. Since we have open source here, that's because the, 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 topic, the topic title is application security for free. So anyone familiar with this kind of term or uh, static application security testing? Nope. Um, so that developer can, with the static application security testing, developer can identify security issue on earlier stage without waiting application through penetration testing. So, anyone familiar about penetration testing? Uh, you must be uh, from security background, sir? Uh, no, uh, uh, I used to work for a client who had to put their software to vantage point. <laughs> okay, we shall talk later. Eh? Um, so, let me talk a little bit about the penetration testing. So. Penetration testing is activity where we uh, we try to find the security issue in our existing application application like you know like uh, we do hacking to the application to try to grant access to the database to the to the system something kind of like that lah. Um, let me talk about the development process. So. This is uh, the, the most common development process lifecycle. The first part, it must be a requirement. And then after requirement, we face the design stage, and then development stage, and testing stage. And after that, we face the staging stage, or used to know like UAT stage. Um, I talked about the penetration testing earlier. So, if you take a look to the this development process, um, since the requirement design development test and UAT, there is no security take a part in every stage of development. So, um, commonly. Security only taking part in the end of the development life cycle. That's why I talk about uh, penetration testing. So, ideally, security taking part in every stage of the development stage. So, in requirement, we should put uh, sec uh, security requirement engineering. In design stage, we, we talk about the threat modeling. And in development, we talk about the source code review and the testing stage we can talk about the dynamic analysis so what happen if the if we only put security at the end of the in the end of the sdlc life cycle so whenever uh, whenever the security issue found whenever the security issue found we have to remediate the cycle to fix all of the security issue going back to the requirement stage. It will be different story if we put uh, security in every stage of the development stage. So 
um, we can we can minimize that. We can make sure that we already follow the security requirements, security the trade the security of design principle, and not rely only on the penetration testing. Um, it's bad. It's the work will be much better if we can define the security issue on the earlier stage rather than on the final stage. Um, so what is security issue? Security, anyone has idea? Mm, okay. One of them is cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting attack involve malicious script that is inject into trusted website. So how does it look like? I will show you how does the cross-site scripting look like. Just one second, give it time. Okay, I have a simple application here. <laughs> it's just for demo purpose, yeah? It's like, um, it's asking for the username, let me put Harley Davidson, and asking for my password, let me type password. And uh, the application will take whatever input without no filter. So this is where cross-site scripting take, taking place. So if I put the malicious, that it's infected by the cross-site scripting. So it can be happen. It must not be happen. So, Going back to the slide, um, okay. Fixing cross-site scripting application must validate data input to the web application from user browser. So um, the application should not uh, take the, so, uh, I mean, the, the application should validate, should, should do sanitize uh, what, the, what the user has been input to the application for prevent the cross-site scripting. And then, after cross-site scripting, we talk about SQL injection. Um, let, me show you, so let me show again how does SQL injection look like. I'm sorry. SQL injection. Up. So I have simple Python application. I I clone it from GitLab, I believe. I will share the the what it, what what's the uh, repository name is. So this is simple application, which has the capability to do some functional for searching. Like, let me type water, and it become water. I type juice, it become juice. But when I put the malicious, we'll see what will happen. It dump the database table. So this is the, the username the username table, uh, sorry, the username data, and this is the hash password data. So, have you checked your application which you created before? Uh, they have the SQL injection. Have you guys think about security when, you, when you're coding, when you create some apps, or not at all? Okay, let's consider not at all, yeah? <laughs> so, okay, so if we're going back to the slide, we'll talk about... Um, 
SQL injection involves entering SQL, uh, SQL statement into an entry field in an application, as I saw you before. So how to fix the SQL injection using prepare statement? So it using prepare statement rather than um, like I will show you uh, I will show you later which one the SQL a SQL injection uh, flows. Let me skip it first. And what else? So for you guys who willing to know about the application security, uh, you can refer to OAP's top 10. Um, every year OAP's top 10 release the, the 10 most critical web application security risks, such as injection, as I showed you before, and broken authentic authentication, and many more. So if you guys willing to know more about what kind of security issue will uh, threaten your apps, uh, OAPS, OWASP can be a good reference for you. Um, okay, now let's consider we don't care about the security at all. And uh, I will talk about the open source static application security testing. It's designed to analyze source code and or compile version of code to help find security flows. So it will scan your co uh, scan our code and it can point us which which code that has a security issue. So since it's uh, open source, so uh, it has some limitation, but we'll talk it later. And I will talk about the open source for Java. I reference to one tools named FindSecBox. Does anyone ever use this? FindSecBox? Okay. So let me show you how FindSecBox can help us. Not really helping, but we'll see. Um, Let me make the phone bigger. It's better? Or should I make it bigger? Make it bigger? Okay, we'll try. Four. It's fine? Okay, so. So this is how I run the FindSec box. Sorry. I run the, I run the FindSec box dot sh, and the report the output file will be the HTML file. And this is the, the directory which I'm willing to scan. So I have Java based application inside this di directory and we'll save the report into the security report.html. So we'll see what will happen. OK. 
Okay, I think it's done. It's already here. Security report or HTML. We'll see uh, how was the result. Mm, I prefer to open the. This is the result. So the result said in this pro in this Java project, um, it has some lot of warnings, high priority warnings, medium priority uh, priority warnings, and it's told it it's tell us uh, what kind of security flows that uh, inside the application. Let's say we talk about the process scripting. And it has information about the line number as well. So we can just go directly to the application, application file and go through the line number to fix the flows. So, uh, and the report has suggestion how to fix the uh, most common security issue like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and many more. Okay, I think that's all for Java. Um, another thing is, for FindSec bugs, it has some So uh, FindSec bug has plugin will, which can uh, integrate to the IDE. Like so, if you have, if if you are, if you using IDE like Eclipse or uh, Android Studio, it can be integrated to the IDE. So you can find the security issue while you're typing your code. So, okay, let me connect to the network first, sorry. Sorry, let me connect it to the network first, yeah, I'm done. This one, so. It can be integrated. In, it can be integrated to your IDE, so you can find the security issue. Meanwhile, your code in your IDE, so it make your life easier, lah, rather than scan through the terminal. And it can it can be integrated to CI/CD platform, like Jenkins. Same like this. So for the next programming language, I will talk about Python. So anyone use Python here? Anyone taking care of the security part? No. Okay, so I will tell you uh, open source application security testing for Python programming language. It's called with Bandit. So, it's bandit in Bahasa means root guy, ba really bad guy. Um, let me show you how it look like. Um, sorry.
Can you guys see the result? Okay. So this is how bandit report look like. It tell us that um, we have security issue on our Python code. It said uh, it's possible SQL injection and the severity is medium and this is the location which project that affected. So and it tell us the snip code and it has some summary and bandit can be integrated to the CI CD orchestrator as well. So basically it's like basically it's it's look like same things, you know. It's it, uh, the difference. Is, the difference is only for the programming language. And let me go back to the slide. And the last one, we'll talk about the Brackman. So it's a open source static application security testing for Ruby on Rails. So if you guys using Ruby on Rails, you can you can use Brakeman to identify your security issue on your code. Um, mostly, like it's, it's oh sorry. This is how Brakeman Jenkins integration reporting look like. So it tell us which which file that has security issue on it, and we can click like check on user controller. We can click scroll injection, and it can. Tell us which uh, which which line number that we should fix. Um, I think I think that's all. So the point is, I would I would like to share my story about how we find security issue on our code with the open source tools so it might help you in your daily activity uh, whether if you are developer or quality assurance I hope this tool can help you but like I said before um, the open source tools has a limitation so the most difference is the open source tools it has a high false pos high false positive so uh, false positive mean when we run the when when we run the scan um, the result comes with a lot of numbers but the the result it's not really is not a hundred percent a hundred percent true it means we need to check it out manually with human effort so that's the that's the huge difference between the commercial with and the open source one with the commercial one we don't need manual effort or automatically and most of them has a capability to integrate with the uh, bug tracking like Jira and then um, like Jira and then integrating to the IDE as well but with the with the more powerful feature rather than the open source one okay I think that's all that I want to tell about so 
I hope it should be enough or maybe if you guys have any question do you know of any for dotnet and javascript dotnet on ja and javascript yeah, any fast tool for dotnet and javascript uh, for the open source one or the commercial one open source one okay since i'm um, sorry uh, you are what's your name sir uh, okay. Oh, okay sir um let me show you So for the for the security part we can reference to the OWASP. It's like like user asking about open source for the .NET and JavaScript, we can find just give me time to get out. This one sir. You can use uh, .NET security guard. It has capability to um, scan the .NET, CSRF, VB.NET as well. Okay, sir, is there anything else? Any other questions? Nope. Yeah. Thank you so much.